Like Vaughan, Ponting was under huge pressure to deliver, both as a batsman and as a captain. Oh, that's a really good one, made by the use of the feet. Ponting looked increasingly confident. The partnership he built with Damien Martin had the makings of a match saver. Martin and Ponting are putting on a stand. They're building runs. Ponting's out there batting for his life, for his reputation, under tremendous pressure. Martin drops the ball into the offside and calls Ponting from the non-striker's end for a run. Well, it was a dodgy single, period. Uh, Martin's hit the ball too close to the bloke at, at cover. They committed the cardinal sin of cricket. Getting run out. Run out? What do you mean run out? Australian captain in that situation. Run out? And then he looks at the bloke who's run him out and he doesn't recognise him. He thinks, what? Who's... That's not... That's not Peterson. Who's that? That's some bloke on the field because Jones is off having a comfort break. By that stage, I'm sure Ponting didn't know how serious Jones' injury was, but he didn't bother to find out and he's made himself look a complete arse, quite frankly. And then he goes off and the camera stays on him and he gets to the steps at the pavilion and he looks up at the England balcony and Duncan Fletcher, the coach, is there and he's going, you cheating And the, everyone looking at it thinking, Has someone, what's happened? Is he, they nicked his wallet. Simon Jones was legitimately injured, so he's allowed to have a substitute fielder. There's no, I don't think that was the issue. The issue was every time they bowled a spell and going off and having a shower and having 10, 15 minutes breather, and just uh, most of the time having two, one, two, three substitute fielders on at any one time. And that wasn't really in the spirit of the game. Ponting had got it wrong. Jones was genuinely injured. But in truth, England had been a little creative with the substitute rule. England were now showing an almost Australian style of ruthlessness. They were playing to win. That's uh, gone from the edge of the bat up onto the helmet, up onto the uh, face guard. And uh, he's not all that thrilled about it. I think Mark Ward just going down there to uh, settle Ricky Ponting down. I think it was one of those uh, a flash of anger that you get when you've been hit. It was an attempted front foot pull shot, really, from Ricky Ponting up into the helmet and then he sort of turns around and tells Jabbergal Smith he'd like him to get back and bowl you're coming here Grunter Matt, Come on, Matt Wade's Come on, having a go now as well so there's a little bit of extra tension out there at the moment no real reason for it, I don't think. It was just, yeah, it's one of those odd dismissals, but I don't think anyone did anything wrong. You're only a f***ing coward, just needs people when they walk off. Hey, Wadey, love your work, buddy. ...to get this one, he dive forward. My immediate reaction was half volley, but boy, if he got underneath it, what a great catch. Well, it was a long hop from Fleming, and the Slater thinks there that it's coming to him comfortably. Well... That's very, very difficult to tell. If Slater did get his fingers under it at first, he then, the ball appeared to me to touch the ground before he actually had control of it. That is absolutely ridiculous of Michael Slater because it's got nothing to do with Slater now. The decision has been made and he's got to calm down. his pads. Warner's done it. Well, he... Great delivery. This is... Let's have a look at what Brad Haddon might have done. That's Mitchell Johnson having the collision. So both men pretty entitled to do that. They're a little bit of jersey tugging and... Uh, obstruction and then hadn't reacted straight away listen stay out of his way and that's what Suleiman Ben took offense to the, the bat pointing by the sound of and it's good that the Australians are finally going to dish something back to him he, he's been standing close and invading personal space and a few players and always in on the action so that's fine Brad hadn't get out of his way and let him run what, 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 what do you do, 
Hein? Qu'est-ce que tu penses? 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 Qu'est-ce que well, it's interesting to see what actually happened in the in the running. Suleiman Ben's quite entitled to go and try and field the ball. And, uh, I suppose at times players will come together when a situation like that happens. I think it depends on how it's handled afterwards. Watch a f***ing here, big man. Watch yourself on me, big here. Watch it. Don't f*** about me, man. Well, he's got to get on with it here. Suleiman Ben has uh, had enough to say. I think Wiz did enough of the ball pitch outside or pitch in line with league stump. Okay, just uh, go back to leg side hotspot again, please. All right, well, that looked like he might have hit it. Mark, you have a look at the bottom of the bat. Watch how it glows more. Oh, it might just be a little hot spot there. At the bottom of the bat, it yeah. glows brighter. Well, yeah, I've just got a little hot spot. Good so, spotting. Rambo. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to stay with your uh, original decision. Just uh, rock back onto that. Yeah, there we go. You're now on screen. Well, now we've got to the stage where the Australians are questioning what's going on on the field, and Steve Smith's going to come down here. You can't question him. He is given. You cannot come down and question him and be angry like That's that. What the fuck is going on for? Yep, they're ticking. Shane goes down as a word. Fantastic stuff, this. Clark really had no uh, full toss, it went through about uh, shin height. 165 for 7. Well, they're having quite a little chat over the garden fence, aren't they? To have a word. I beg your pardon, Shane Watson. <laughs> Sorry, warning. The time. It's another one that's just caught the bat as it's come through. Merv Hughes just uh, letting Gordon know that he's been a little bit lucky. World's biggest cricketing nations, Australia and India, remain at loggerheads in a racism row. Uh, the Indian Cricket Board have announced it will be suspending its team's tour of Australia after their bowler, Habajan Singh, received a three-match ban for an alleged racist remark against Australia's Andrew Simons. Matt McClure reports on the angry reaction in Delhi. Angry fans fill the streets torching effigies of the umpires they say wrongly ruled against their team during its recent loss to Australia. Nothing ignites passions in India like cricket. Nothing can injure this country's pride more than the allegation one of their favoured sons made racist comments about an opposing player. This test series should be annulled, says one fan. Such umpires should be banned. Indian bowler Harbhajan Singh faces a three-match suspension. After the referee ruled, he called Andrew Simons, Australia's only non-white member, a monkey during the two teams' recent match in Sydney. 
I don't like to comment anything. Uh, very disappointing the way uh, uh, the result was. Uh, Fellow team the, members uh, insist Singh is being the, uh, falsely the accused. Even his mother has come to his defense. India's cricket board is appealing the ruling. The unfair allegation of racism against our Indian player is wholly unacceptable. The game of cricket is paramount, but so too is the honor of Indian cricket team, India's cricket team and every Indian. The Indian team has delayed travel to Canberra, the next stop on its tour down under, and is threatening to pull out of the series altogether if the issue is not resolved quickly. Even if the controversy subsides and play resumes as scheduled on Thursday, Observers say the reputation of what's been called the gentleman's game has been forever stained. Matt McClure, Al Jazeera, Delhi.